This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Perk, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. This is Comics Illustrator Ron Friends, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. There's a thin line between heroism and madness. Here the line fades to nothing at all. This is a world of capes and lunatics. And nothing is off limits. (laughs) Hello and welcome back to the Capes and Lunatics, episode 149. One week until Master Doom. Even I am not filled in on all the details of what's coming in 150. Anyway, welcome back. I am Phil. we got a full house tonight. Joining me, I'll go clockwise, my screen, uh, queen of the armadillos, scourge of the college students on the Florida beaches is... Hey, y'all. It's Lil Pell. And the fancy man from Jersey, the... Uh, I guess Vader didn't have a father, uh, but the the future owner of a handlebar mustache, Charlie the Professor Essen, and from his secret under, underground bunker in Ohio, it is Superman's number one fan. It's me, it's Tyler, hanging out here. You should have said Our Fortress of so- Social Distancing. <gasps> Fortress of Social yeah, Distance, dude. I know. It's the cave of solitude. Well, because it's in my basement, so it's the cave of solitude. And right now, it's you know, it's not really social distancing when he's behind you. So. Uh, yes, but he's about five to six feet away, so he's he's properly socially at distanced. the current moment. <laughs> ah, yes, <laughs> Dad, put you in a headlock. Exactly. So anyway, so yeah, so once again, yes, the big. What's going on in the world? I haven't heard the same topic for the last two weeks or anything. <coughs> Corona. Uh, oh, there's lots of topics. Philip. I know, I know. But uh, so yes, do, let's talk about happy stuff, Philip. Let's talk about I happy know. stuff. Well, like kids well, there's no happy stuff in the news, unfortunately. I mean, that's... okay. Well, I mean, there's tangential stuff to the coronavirus. Uh, so I don't, wait, I don't really want to talk about it a lot because I'm sick of hearing about it. But uh, yeah, like they did. We say did we did we get the news last week that Black Widow was uh postponed because of that? Yeah, we got I that Black. Was... They did. Uh, well, yes. Is that like, this week or last week? I feel like it was this week. It was this week that um, they they finally relented and they're saying that it is postponed. But at the same time, we've got that very interesting side note because, as we know, last week what we did talk about was Onward. Yes. I believe we talked about that last week. Onward is coming to video on demand. It's been out for two weeks and they said, you know what? Throw that, throw that on video on demand, and then Disney Plus April fifteenth. And I think they said, no, I think, no, it, I think no, it, wait, back it up. I think it's tonight. Coming. It drops, and I think it's coming yeah, on video on demand. But, but I don't think it's and on then Disney is April third. Yeah. Oh, April third. Okay, I thought it was April fifteenth. But and yeah. Did, and did I say you have to pay like an extra fee for even on Disney Plus, or or is it going to be just the price of your subscription for Disney just, Plus? I think it's just the subscription. Just yeah, like the think, way they yeah. It's extra uh, extra fee right now if you want. Maybe it's an extra fee to play it on Disney Plus through video on demand. But I mean, if they do that with Black Widow and just drop it on Disney, you know, first video on demand and then Disney Plus, I mean, they might eat some money, but they're going to make a lot of good will. This is my thought, guys. This is my thought. Because Warner Brothers, like, today just said they're thinking about Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman yeah. going direct like that. My thought is with Wonder Woman being not till June and with Black Widow not having a date, they might hold those films to when theaters reopen. And then those are the movies that they put in theaters so that when you return to theaters, there's something to exciting to see. And everyone's going to rush to see to get oh, out man. because they're going to make Disney's going to make more money by having some sort of theatrical release. <laughs> he thinks yeah. the American public is patient. <laughs> Well, I gotta say this. I, mean, I gotta say it. this. It's gonna you'll be pay a... the ticket price, and then you'll buy it when it comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you really think Warner's is gonna put Wonder Woman up against Black Widow? I'm not saying the same day. I'm just saying. Oh well, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like looking at the fact that they're talking about it, but I'm just saying, like we we can project yeah. theaters to open sometime in the summer. 
Oh, but what's yeah. going to be there if they if they've already decided to put everything like that's the one thing Disney's just pulled it. It hasn't said it's going to streaming or anything. Well, um, they, I just saw something on CBR like just before we got on the where Warner's is apparently committing to a theatrical release for Wonder Woman first. I mean, it should until it's closer to release time, and yeah. you know, things haven't changed. Don't frequent CBR. They- don't frequent CBR, Charlie Esser, until Brian Cronin gives us credit. Fight me, nerds. Because <laughs> um, I mean, there's got to be something to look forward to, and some sort of movie coming to theaters when they do reopen. If you've released you, everything, man. like well, yep. I mean, yeah, they- from beyond. All right, here's here's another here's another element to this. I don't know if it, it it matters or not, but do you think they have a Marvel? Does, does Disney and Marvel have a plan in effect that Black Widow has to come before Falcon and Winter Soldier, which which is going to hit Disney Plus in August? I don't. I think I don't think so. I mean, because this is like that weird movie. It's an inner mitten story yeah. that I don't think is really going to have any kind of other effects. Maybe. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I imagine that unless basically, there's an Ed or something. Yeah. You. Here's what I'll say. If they're going to spoil Taskmaster in Falcon and Winter Soldier, then that becomes an issue. But then it's easy enough to do just by going the video on demand route. And I said it last you know? week, and I said it last week and I'll say it again. Taskmaster, I'm so glad that Chris Evans and Jeremy Renner's stunt doubles are getting we're still getting work. Yeah. What I got to say is what's weird about um Video well, the problem with any releasing anything on video on demand is you don't get repeat v- viewing because that's the that's the that's where they get their money in the movie theater. Oh yeah, is when you go two or three times. Yeah, you know, and if I buy it, and granted, yeah, but I'm gonna have like 48 hours to watch it in, so I watch it once in the first 48 hours, then I'm gonna buy it all again in the next 48 hours. I don't know. I might watch it twice at first forty eight hours. I seem to, I think it's gonna be unlikely I'm gonna go in another forty the way I would do now where I might watch it on Saturday and then watch it again on Sunday with the kids. Right. And then maybe might... go the next weekend too if I really loved it a lot, which I've done uh with a few films, you know. Right, because like Janine and I has done like her and I go and then like she'll take Solomon or I'll take Solomon or she'll go back with her mom or something like that. But if we're going to do video on demand, we can all gather around the TV. Exactly. And it's, you know, and again, I think video on demand will work for smaller films that would really like could have done well in theaters, but maybe not. But I think for these tentpole blockbusters that, I mean, Disney had a killer year last year. So I think they're going to, they're okay to kind of hold off till the time is right and then release it when they're going to make their money. Well, I mean, if you think about they it, they have Black Widow and Mulan. Let me put it. Well, there's one way to look at it, and that and that's the other thing is like what they're going to release is probably going to be Mulan. Like if, when the theater and first of the theaters aren't actually closed right now. They um, are in Ohio. Okay. Well, yeah, everything in Ohio, Ohio they're all closed, and then AMC and Cinemark both completely shut their chains down nationwide. Mm, okay. So I'm saying like there's a lot of we got to remember we're talking different states here, and I got to remember yeah. that too. Yeah, I think they might be. But shut here, down yeah, here. Here in Ohio, like all movie theaters are shut. Yeah, but do you think that you? See, I mean, I don't know if they're they're going to want to release if like half the country's mo- uh, theaters are shut down either. Though, too, that's going right. to hurt. Well, yeah, but too. you know, wait till everything's up and going. Yeah, yeah, but it's you know, I mean, it's only it's March now. We've got April to get through, and you know, hopefully, hopefully things are back to some kind of normalcy sometime in April. You know. Um Hopefully, you know. I want to spend my birthday in, in the real world. You can only shelter in place for so long until it becomes ridiculous. You know, and that's the thing is it is going to get to be ridiculous. Right well, now, just people hunkering down for two weeks. It's already starting to feel a little ridiculous to people because it's not the stand. Yeah, no. People aren't falling down in the middle of the street people well, are you know this cor- isn't the world we're living according in according to some people people are but again and again i mean i mean i'm lucky enough to get to go to work you're lucky enough to be able to work from home but it's like eventually yeah. people are gonna have to go back to work i mean oh yeah 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 it's it's you know um although you know give it to you this much we're, we're 
we're we're all socialists now, as they say. Um, yeah, but and, but again, may, maybe the rich people work for us for once. You know, how long do you think like the Disney's of the world and everybody else are going to stand back and be like, oh, we can't release movies for how long? Uh huh. Okay, yeah. Well, I, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Well, the thing about it, the thing about video on demand, if, if they charge, so let's say they do release Black Widow, and it's going to be a thirty dollar uh, download. Okay. Now, yeah, it's more than what I'd pay if I went to the theater, but I'm not paying for extra tickets for the kids. I'm also yeah. not paying for that multiple scene. I bet you. I bet you could. Get, I bet you they'll do it for like twenty, more like twenty. Cause I well, think yeah, yeah. these I days mean, you get you can get a Blu-ray for like twenty or twenty-two. Yeah, so not if they're not selling them. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. And then VO, yeah, and VOD well, will be for first. For example, yeah. right now, video on demand they released. Uh, was it The Hunt, The Invisible Man, and Emma, which Jania wants to see, and they're all 1999 rentals. Yeah, yeah right they, don't, they don't want to go too high. They don't want to, you know, people are going to be like, hey. well, yeah. but especially again, if, if, if some people are working. This isn't The Invisible Man. This isn't The Invisible it's, Man. It's Disney. Disney is like Nintendo. They know people will buy it, so they charge what they want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they may not because they don't need to, because again, they're not splitting it with the uh, theater. Yeah. So they get all that money from from that. They it actually, also depends on how the contracts are. Yeah. Because with Disney, like I know for a fact when I worked at the theater um, when I was in high school, uh, the Lucas films for Star Wars, the prequels, theaters got zero ticket money. Every dollar for a ticket went back to Lucasfilm. So the theaters made all their money off concession. So it also depends on how Disney negotiates their stuff. Being Disney, they probably don't give the theaters much of anything um, until maybe like after week eight or something. I mean, I, again, I don't know what Disney's deal is on that, but whatever it is, I get the feeling, you know, everything else on it, they save on print costs, they save on, you know, duplication costs, they what, save on... What are you on, talking about, Carly? What's what? print costs? What's print costs? Oh, cost? yeah. Yeah, well, I... I <laughs> you mean, you mean that when, they, when someone presses a button on a computer and it broadcasts and the theater just yeah. download it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm thinking. I'm, I'm trying, man. I'm trying to think. No, no, I you're fine. That there's a reason theaters still exist, and if they were making no money on it, I don't think that theaters would still exist. Uh, you know, essentially. No, I mean they they exist because, like you said, you pay for you and your kids to go popcorn, or you buy yeah. yourself, and then you go back again. Well, and yeah, then but if they're you, not getting you, any you, money on that ticket, they're not getting much. Popcorn. You know? But I mean, the theaters are looking. Well, the for, theater makes all its concession money. Yeah, and they're and, and then I, yeah. like I know our big theater near here. I mean, they have the they have the uh, trampoline park, you know, that which makes money for them. Then they have like yeah. a sports bar upstairs. I mean, you can go upstairs get a drink or whatever before a movie and stuff. You know, so yeah. they're looking. They are looking for it's other also, revenue streams. It's a per movie. Like I remember this is taken back, but like for example, when like Paranormal Activity and Blair Witch, mm. the movies that. The contracts were written that theaters got more money out of, but then all of a sudden they exploded and became huge hype films. The theaters reaped benefits from that because they weren't sharing as much because the studio didn't expect that type of turnout. Yeah. Uh, And again, I don't know necessarily what the situation is right now with the theaters. Um, Because obviously when you were in high school, when I was in high school, These were all very different times. Oh yeah, fiscally for the theater business. So um, I got to think that they're making a little more off of it, be- expressly because I think that the theaters are offering Disney and all the other companies something that they are not getting. It's a, essentially, I mean, it, it's not. It's as, a way it, of yeah. It's double dipping. I mean, if you think about it, like you pay to go to the theater to see it, you experience mm-hmm. it in that theater atmosphere. Then four months later, you buy it at home, so you pay for it again. Mm-hmm. You know, so so you, you're you're experiencing they can make money off you like that. We're in a big time of yeah. un- we're in a big time of uncertainty. You know, the age of uh... I don't know. Yes, but who knows? And and how it's going to go, we'll see. But I think that there is an argument that if this goes on too long. It might they might get released in in straight to video on demand, but I think for it to go, and I said that the first time with uh, Black Widow being released in May, I don't think by May we're going to be in this kind of shelter in place kind of mindset anymore because we're getting to it now because 
once you're sheltered in place, you know, unless we actually start getting people dropping dead in the streets, we aren't going to be in a situation where, you know, it's but we you, have to be sheltered in place through through May. But you can infect everybody. It, it's got a, it's got a, you know, it's got a, it's got a, it's got an, it's got a contagious period and an incubation period. But once you've separated the people out for most of that time, you're not going to keep on expanding. You know, Italy unfortunately got hit very hard, they, but still, most of Italy, you know, as they say, most of Italy doesn't have as big of a problem because it is concentrated in that in those well, in a few I, northern Italian towns. Well, I heard too. The big problem with Italy is they have like this. I think the second biggest population of uh, older people, like the elderly and older people. Oh yeah. So, yeah, yeah, which makes it far more fatal. Yes. And that's actually one of the things is like people say, "Oh, it hits the elderly harder," but you know, forty-year-olds, thirty-year-olds, they can all still get it, and you know, even people with asthma, you can survive it, but it hits you hard. Yes. And it is something that we don't have a lot of treatments for yet, although those are rapidly coming down the pike. They have several antiviral drugs, a lot of malaria drugs, are now being used for compassionate use to to slow the progress of the virus. All right, enough of this. Enough of this garbage. Black Widow, Wonder Woman may hit digital. You know, New mm-hmm. Mutants release the New Mutants cut. You know, it'll, it'll be here by twenty twenty two. Yeah, give us something. If like, anything is going to really get released on video on demand, it will be New, new Mutants. Yes. I can, I can very much see that <laughs> coming through. Nobody. You know, they should. Um, I mean, that thing's been riddled with so many problems. They should just be like, get it out now. Just get, get it out. What's funny is. I said it had a chance of making money as soon as, you know, some of these big blockbusters were being moved. And then as soon as <laughs> then all of a sudden they're like, nope, it's being pulled. And I was like, up. Oh. And then it, the theater shut down. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, what What really that should get released on video on demand is the uh, butthole cut of crack of cats. <laughs> That's a myth. They yeah, had, they had one of they had one of the people who did the CG for it talking about like it's a myth yeah and and what do people say about the center cut and yet how it many exists. people are demanding for it as well it, it exists there's a bunch of it buttholes in either exists. one Hey-o. like there is a it, even if it's a work print there is a bigger better cut no, of footage not. come on bigger not maybe not better no offense tyler <laughs> come on Lola. if there's buttholes in both uh, in both Lola, in both movies hey just like, even an incomplete movie would be better than what we got so that I don't know. I don't want to. I don't think anything that Josh Trank left on the cutting room floor is going to make that Fantastic Four any better. What so. Fantastic it's, Four it's movie? Josh what Fantastic by Four? By a Warner Brothers mandate to cut a movie and reshot most of it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, bro. We could go round and round. But that this. doesn't. Yeah. I, anyway. That, oh hey. I have all kinds. I'm just of saying, just because something's a myth doesn't good. mean people won't demand it, and doesn't mean that someone might someday make money off of it. All right. Let's change the subject. Uh Mr. Full Stream Ahead, uh, Charlie Esser, did you see? Yes. Uh, did you see the casting for uh, Mandalorian season two? Yeah, we're getting uh, Rosario Dar- Dawson as yep. uh, what's her name, Ashoka. That's is that Anakin? That's Anakin's uh, Padawan, correct? I'm not familiar. I know they said isn't she like yes. from the animated yes. like Clone Wars and stuff? So yeah. Ahsoka so, starts out in Clone Wars mm-hmm. and then makes it into Rebels. So, which actually, if she makes it all the way into Mandalorian, that means that she survives Rebels. And spoilers, Charlie. Spoilers. Okay. Well, they she spoiled it already. Don't ask me. Man. Okay, look. She survives Rebels. Spoilers for anybody listening. In a very unique way that, if I were to explain it, will change the way you well, pursue we, Star Wars. We don't, we don't have to go into that. Um, hey, Bruce Willis. But regardless. So she's there. So that's that's new, and that is also important because it also gives us this tie to the Skywalker legacy, to to Anakin, the dark side, the light side, and eventually the balance of the Force. You know, which is to be a moisture farmer. Mm-hmm. I'm really hoping we're going to find her on Tatooine farming that moisture, the way we were, the way Phrasing. Lucas always intended. Right. It just depends on how they bring her in, like when, what time she returns. Mandalorian two, uh, Ashoka is going to be in it. Mando, Ahsoka, whatever her name is. Ahsoka, man. Yeah, the second Mandalorian. They've done some casting on it, and they're going to have her. I'm, 
Mando. Is this interesting? Did you think say they wrapped Mandalorian season two? Uh, did they wrap it? I That's what I feel like I read not too long ago. So it makes me wonder if she'll be like a tease out or like it's a. Well, I mean, it's like, entirely po- look. They keep this stuff so under wraps. Oh yeah, Disney. You know. <laughs> Yeah, Disney. They keep this stuff so under wraps. I mean, you know, we find out that they wrapped it before we even knew that they started it, you know? That's the best way. Yes. I'm tired of knowing everything. Speaking of, I know Charlie Esser is uh, in support of uh, releasing the final season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., especially since it's all filmed and done. It's just Mm -hmm. sitting there ready to... It's all in the can already. They might as well just release it early. I already thought that show ended. I know. Uh, Last season's coming. That's... Tristan thinks actually ah- ah- Ahsoka will be a backdoor pilot for an Ahsoka series to show what she did after she left the Jedi. Hmm. Which, I mean, there is that time period between Clone Wars ending mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, well, and, I, mm, and we know we don't crazy. see her it's a in, window. In, in the in the last of the nanal and I could so. see I could see Rosaria Dawson oh. holding her own series yeah well that's because she's lost in space Charlie okay well so she's Ahsoka dies found in so, the Mandalorian so, so so what happens is Ahsoka dies in Rebels but in the last two episodes of Rebels you find that Ezra finds a way to travel through time and is at the nexus of time where he can interact with everybody in the Force going on all around him. And he actually rescues Ahsoka and pulls her out, thus skipping her death. And then Ezra gets lost into like a black hole, and it ends uh, that Ahsoka is going after Ezra. So that explains why she is gone throughout the uh, the trilogy and everything. Okay. It, except that, except that, um, except that the Mandalorian takes place before the second half of the, the start of the Nanalgy. So. It, it takes place after episode six. Yes. So at the time Darth Vader's done is when she would return. Because that's how they set it up, is her return was after everything was over. Well, yeah. Uh, okay. But then that doesn't explain why she's not in the second – I'm sorry, the second third of the nonology. So you mean like seven, eight, nine? Yeah. That's because it's Disney. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want her there. Exactly. Because but anyway – but They didn't want to try, try to bring in like the stuff from the Clone Wars. Yeah. Hey, even though Rebels is the greatest Star Wars thing to come out since. Oh, I already told him, but yeah, you can show him if you want to. What is helmet? Yeah, he wants. You want to show it to him, or you want to put it on first? His helmet is amazing. Yeah, there it is. Got it. Yeah, the camera's down there. You so. said it makes the noise too. <sighs> yeah. Nice. Where's the oh. Where's the on button? Oh, 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 oh! I know. I didn't know. Okay. You just gotta re you gotta reenact the scene from Return of the Jedi. Oh uh, look look Lilith. Disney got Disney got their weekly payoff from Charlie Esser. Oh and Mommy? Yeah. If, if you take the talk part off, it does the wheezing too. When he says, I want to oh. see you with my own eyes. Jeez. There you go. Sorry. Here, son, it's your birthday. I shall turn you into a cyborg. Well, that is. I want to see you with my own eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, surprisingly, his eyes actually survived, so that's good. I would have thought he had like robotic eyes, but anyway. Yep, that is Tristan's uh, big, big birthday gift. So. Nice. What's your question, Tristan? We don't know. <laughs> He's at the age where he's concerned about people's manhoods. So. Okay, before anyway. we before we get the comics, I will throw out my weekly. Uh, you should be watching Picard, the penultimate episode of season one, sh- uh, dropped on Take Thursday. And Lilith is going to binge the whole thing next weekend. It's worth it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. They, they brought they introduced another legacy character uh, this week. So, which one? Uh oh, you want the spoiler? I don't watch the show. He's not going to watch it. I thought he liked Star Trek. Uh, the son of Dr. Uh, Noonien Soong. Oh, played by Data? Yeah, played by Brent Spiner, yes. Played by Brent Spiner. <laughs> yes. Of course. That man gets so much work just playing the same. Everyone looks like me. He played He played Data in one of Picard's dreams in the first episode. And yeah, the episode mm-hmm. nine. Yep, he's the son of Dr. Soong, yes. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. 
He, he, I think he's been in like everything since because he, he's. I, he, I, they actually bring him in for the uh, that Enterprise series with Je- Scott Bakula too. Who Data? As no, as Noonien Soon. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Brent Spiner, yeah. Well, they said you know you know which one of them has been in every one of those series. Uh, Jonathan Frakes has been in every one in some form or another. Mm, it's true. Yeah, because in in deep uh, space in Deep Space Nine he played Thomas like Riker. Yes. Uh, yeah, and then Voyager. Yeah, Q snapped him there one episode, and then uh, what was that? Mm-hmm. The finale of Enterprise. There was that you know flash forward to him and, him yep, and Troy talking forward. about the Enterprise. Yeah. So weird. Yeah. It's all very cool. Yes, but anyway, that's that's oh. that's Star Trek and Seven of Nines there, and seven uh, of nines, yeah. yeah, there's a and there's about to be a big fight between the uh, the. Uh, the artificial beings and the Romulans. The Romulan Aero mod is coming in. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Charlie. <Charlie's up. laughs> yeah, I, it's all very exciting, Philip. Um, I'm very. Excited I'm just giving about- my recommendation. People should watch it. I know Lilith yeah. is going to binge it in her drunken stupor next weekend. No, I mean I'm sure it's going to be great. You know, I just I I'm not ready to pay for CBS yet. No. You know. I understand. I will probably. I will probably I will get DC when, Universe again back before that when they do the second season of um, oh what are they called? What is the fun fact about the DCU? <laughs> They're morally bankrupt. Your grandfather would. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, that's. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So, and that would be HBO Max. But um, anyway, so DC. Yeah, I will probably. Wow, why can't I think of the name? Um, what HBO? The Max? team that Beast Boy was on. Oh, Teen um, Titans. Doom Patrol? Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol. Yeah, when Doom Patrol comes back, I m- I might get DC U back again. Well, I think that. I think they're gonna put it on HBO Max too. Doom Patrol. They said. Well, that'll be good because I got HBO. I got, and I think they're giving. All the AT and T subscribers, you know, HBO Max for a year. For yeah, free. so so you know that will be great. <laughs> then I don't have to waste my time with TCU. I, the, literally, the only reason I want to is I want to go through the old Batman comics from the eighties to see if they called it the Bat Coop or not. And again, it's like I don't know. If eventually, you think they're going to fold DC Universe and HBO Max? It just seems counterproductive to have both. We have had this conversation Everyone multiple has. times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I just think it makes more sense if they just make it a tab, just the same way that you can pick Pixar or Star Wars on Disney Plus. Yep. Um, you just pick DC, DC tab. Yep. under. Because honestly, yeah. I would love to have one subscription service that has all my DC stuff. You know, yeah. I would love to instead of having like Netflix have Gotham. You know, Epic still has Pennyworth. Um, Pennyworth. Yeah. You know, Netflix has Lucifer. The CW stuff's supposed to be leaving Netflix, I think, in a year. And then, you know, wherever they end up. So I just want like, to watch all my DC stuff in one place. And that'll be the advantage of HBO Max is because they're not branded as Disney, they can have the DC tab and they can have the Sesame Street tab. You know? Exactly. They can have, they, they, they can mix their media just uh, fine because yeah. they already are. And, you know, you can put your own parental controls out. That's your that's your responsibility, Tyler. And they don't have to worry about. Oh, we don't want to have that kind of show on Disney Plus yeah. because Disney Plus is all family friendly. That is the big advantage of the of HBO over Disney Plus. Yeah, it's just like yeah. Although I do wonder how long that's going to be the case for Disney Plus. Well, that's why they especially have to, if HBO Max that's... steps up and says they're going to be the two. Well, that's why they own Hulu. Pulp Fiction is why, a Disney yeah. movie, yeah. and that's why. You know, they can put stuff on Hulu, and then you can do the Hulu Disney Plus joint subscriptions and, and stuff like that. And I mean, yeah. and I mean, I don't know why they just don't put it all on Disney Plus now because you can set up kids kids profiles, and they, you know, it only really let them. It's the image. It really it's, it's the concept yeah. of even though, like, for the longest time, do you remember when Disney bought Marvel and Avengers going to be the first movie released under the Disney like ownership? They talked about the idea of they didn't want to see. Like the Disney Castle or anything with like Marvel, so Disney didn't want to put as much of its branding on Marvel at first, and it's yeah. kind of that idea when you think Disney, there's a certain image 
that you want to preserve, even though they own just like they used to own Touchstone Pictures. If they still do, yeah. if it still exists, like it was Disney making movies, but under this brand and this logo, even though it's the same company. Yeah, but and we also idea, see that they, they they eventually warmed up to Marvel, and now Marvel is Disney it, with its PG thirteen content. But you still don't see like the Disney castle and stuff like that as a Marvel film starts. It's still branded as Marvel, even though no, no, because it, it's know. the Marvel that, start. But but the Disney right. Plus brand includes subsumes that and that's right. sort of the point is that you you'll know, never but you'll never think like Lula just said you'll never get certain things that you want to associate with Disney I never want to think of Mickey Mouse and Pulp Fiction in the same thing oh well, maybe you don't, don't but you know <laughs> because Disney has the reputation of the family film the family identity yeah. you know Disneyland you're never going to walk into Tarantino land at a Disney theme park well, because that just you know, there are, there are certain things that I they're not going to put Disney in front of, even though they own, because it's gonna it's gonna tarnish that Disney brand. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Uh, I I am I am not a person to believe in never, because you know never was never never you know Touchstone Films, and never was a lot of things that Disney has produced over the years. So. I don't think that never is a real thing. And so that Disney has embraced Marvel in its own way has opened this door that, you know what, look, we need to, we need to recognize it, it, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't the fifties anymore. And the fifties weren't even the fifties. If we're ever honest about it, we had well, I mean, no pants running mean, around for gosh sakes. Marvel is, Marvel's always been more family friendly. I mean, we all grew up watching Marvel cartoons on Saturday mornings and stuff. So there's always been an identity to it that can be uh, shifted. But like well, some of these other I mean, you know, aren't going to go Marvel. They're not going to go Disney. You're not, you know. So yeah, I mean, it's 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 arguable. It's it's arguable what was you know family friendly and what wasn't. I mean, my first swear word was in a Fantastic Four comic book. <gasps> right. I mean, what I'm saying the like thing the thing said shit. the D word. I was just so like excited. you could, I mean, comics are in a medium that they make kids books and adult books. So I'm just saying the properties yeah. always have leaned towards a child likeness to it that Disney can't adapt. Um, and that was pre Disney owned. I mean, and have again, you ever watched Superhero Friends? Yeah, I've watched it. The, the and- child's cartoon, little figures or whatever, like. Well, it's called Superhero Mm -hmm. Squad, first off. There you go. And has a lot of... I'm not a Marvel person. What? I'm not a big Marvel. Yeah, but Superhero Squad has a lot of very interesting nods to very... Very... Not, I won't say adult, but but, 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 but it it plays with its own... It it plays with its own uh, medium very well. well. Much like... Much in the way Teen Titans Go does. Well, they're kind of doing shorts of that on Disney Junior right now too. So it's it's more like kid based right now. Like do like little. Oh yeah, yeah. I think they're doing the that. superhero. Oh, yeah, that, that that might be the the Marvel superhero friends, which they actually have the book out, yeah. which is a little more kids version of the the original hardcore superhero squad. Yeah, no, no, yeah. This this one's more kid based because it's on Disney Junior, and it's yeah. like more updated because you get like Spider Gwen's in there, uh, Miss Marvel, yeah. Kamala Khan's there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's it is what it is. But I'm just saying I, I don't think anything's ever off the table. And we'll see we'll see we'll see how far the rock pushes it in Jungle Cruise, man. He's uh he's he's a scam artist near to well. So we'll see where it goes from there. Hey Hey kids, comics. Yeah, let's talk some comics. Phil's comics corner. Lilith. Oh. Would you like to throw anything out? No, that's okay. Whatever you guys want to talk about, I don't care. Oh, come on. I want to hear that voice. Oh, go ahead. Whatever you guys want to talk about. All right. Well, I got two Conans to choose from. I actually did read the uh, Conan battle. What is it? Battle for the Serpent Crown? Battle for the Serpent Crown. Because it had Black Cat and Ben Riley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got everyone. So, Lilith, you would have loved it. Yes, um, she would have. I love Ben Riley. I just I I love how completely indestructible Conan is. Uh, I know. Who's he, Wonder Man? 
He's something like that. He's he's just all muscle and you know bones hardened by poor nutrition. Apparently, I don't know. It's yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, I think at this point he is he has had some kind of he's been on the whole Avengers and the you know he's been on the whole Savage Avengers because this takes place in the middle of the Savage Avengers storyline. Which I find very interesting that the Savage Avengers story is going on because he says he was brought here to face Cullen Gath and he cannot leave until Cullen Gath is destroyed. Mm-hmm. So unless the Savage Avengers are no longer going after Cullen Gath, this is taking place somewhere in between all that. Yes, and uh, and I just love him, you know, beating up Ben Riley. So there you go. How dare you? There you go. There you go, Lilith. Conan beats up Ben Riley. Yay! He finally gets Riley. what he deserves. Yeah, um, Conan, sweet. Yeah, and you know, and, and again, Conan gets you know punched in the face by Ben Riley, and he's like, "Stop the only hitting thing me!" I got to read this week nice. is Robin. Well, that's how was Robin, oh, which was great. The 80th anniversary. That's my pick of the week, my friends. Oh, it was a good shocker! Book. Oh, shut up! You Phil, know it was good. Which, hey, Phil, which story was your favorite? Um, let's see, any of those first one couple ones because they're all Dick Grayson. Uh. Let me yep, think. I agree. Uh, I like I like the Dick Grayson the first one, and then I like um, I kind of like the Damien one. It was interesting. Um, the Tim Drake was okay. The first one, um, not really digging the Stephanie Brown at How all. The Jason dare Plummer you? Was- K- Kara Kelly was pretty cool though. What the whole what the what that her pinup page? <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand to Carrie Kelly. Yeah, exactly. Do you even have a story? Oh, she that was a pinup page. That, that was and that was enough for me to be a disgusted. Um, pinup page. I don't like they her. Remember everybody is, and I appreciate it. <laughs> I like the Jason Todd one, but I wish they would have done another or something more with Jason Todd. Um, well, what the one he's Robin or when he's Red Hood? The Red Hood one. Okay. Well, the one where it's cut in between both. So. I just, I just kind of wish they would have done something a bit more. I don't know. I like that we actually. It was got, good. I just would like something more. I like that we got some of the like the like old teams, like even like the, you know we got a Grayson story with, uh, you know Tim C. Oh, and yeah. Lilith. Yeah, we got a nice little shot of Dick Grayson as Dick was in all, every form. Dick was all monkeying around. Uh, we even got a. De- <laughs> Thank you, love. Oh, I mean, we even got a Devin Grace and Titans era, you know, like the 99-2000 era. Who's Devin Grayson? Yep. She was a writer on Nightwing, like, in the early 2000s. Oh, I thought that it was, like, a character, like, no. Dick Grayson's long-lost cousin, Devin. No, know? they had a Grayson okay. writing Grayson for a while, yeah. Oh, wow. So Grayson was... Get out! Grayson. You don't know who Devin Grayson is! Get out! <laughs> no. We even have... <laughs> I don't know who anyone is, okay? I know, I know. There's like four writers I actually know. But no, this was good. I think even you would enjoy the Charlie Esther. I mean, there's even like a No Man's Land era story. and Okay, well, I'm sure. By Chuck- if it wasn't an $8 book, I might have, and I wasn't buying 10 other books that day, I might have picked it up. $8, 10 my friend. <laughs> well, yes, that's I not know. a selling point, Philip. I know, but it's 100 pages. All right, what cover did That's it? a dime a page. What cover did everyone get? I think I saw it. Tyler, you sent me that picture. You yeah. sent me that was your got, cover, right? I got the 1950s variant just because I liked the drawing. It was cool. But it was the only one they had besides the main cover. Lilith, which one did you get? Yeah. All of them. What? I got the main one and the one in your hand. Oh, did you? You know, I mean. Hold you, on. I'll yeah. grab mine. Hold on. <laughs> Phrasing. Uh, you know what one I, I was almost. Uh, fighting with. It wasn't even a Dick Grayson one. I like the nine, the 90s one with Tim Drake on it. Yeah, that was cool, too. Yeah. Yeah, I like the... Tyler was saying, I like the 90s one with Tim Drake on uh-huh. it, even. Yes. So, I like the art Here's style. your drop, Charlie. What? The here's your drop. I'm here for Dick. Thank you. There you go. You're here for Peter. You're here for Dick, yes. I need to pop off here, fellas. I go put the little girl to bed. So, okay, okay you tell Jania good night for us, okay? What I said, you tell Jania good night for us, okay? 
I, I missed it. You were breaking up. Oh, but. I said, yeah, okay, yeah, I told Jania good night for us. You said little girl. I was like, you know. Yeah, get no. it. Sailor's out of the past. She's it, running around. It's in the window. Time. I got I to gotta go tuck in my crazy warrior princess. That's what I said. Tell Jania good night. Princess. <laughs> night, guys. Night. Good night. What? Philip, no. I was saying he, he was talking Just about his wife. Mess. I said he was talking about his wife is what I was hinting I, at. Yeah. I know. I but, get it. <laughs> We do Wade's World together. I get it. <laughs> I just, yeah. I know. All right. What else should we talk We're about? We're going to go harder on those transitions, Phil. Okay. Um, uh, Super, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen number nine came out. I guess I'm probably the only person still reading that. Yeah, I didn't read it. Well, I haven't read it since day one. <laughs> so. is this, oh, it's, it's good. It's still really good. Is, it is his, he still Superman's pal? Is he Superman's pal, Charlie wants to know? Well, is he still Superman's <laughs> pal? Um, um, not really, actually. I, oh. I do like the title, though. It's very vintage feeling. But... Well, well, yeah. The whole world knows his identity. Everyone's his pal now. Exactly. But this is a detective story. It's something a little different for Jimmy, because, I don't know, he's with Jix, and it's, it's cool. It's a cool, fun story. Is it as good as Lois Lane? No. I feel like this... Actually, I feel like this uh, Jimmy is more kind of like an all title book but like Lois she's like it's a really good book but like in a different way like Lois is really political you know what I mean and yes. like it's intrigue and kind of like you know psychological thriller where Jimmy it's it's kind of surface level you don't have to think too hard about it <laughs> it's, it's the I mean that in a good way though you know you don't have to think <laughs> good 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 uh it was a good week for DC, though, because uh, my pick of the week is actually Aquaman 58. Oh. The Aqua Baby is here. That's right. I'm here for it. Yeah. Or I'm stirring up trash, being the trash person that he is. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, like, we're done with that whole political surface garbage. We're actually dealing with the politics of the ocean, and we're trying to get a coup going, and he's got a baby. There's literally bloody sharks in the water, like. And it literally takes a finally t- literally takes a village to raise a baby, right, Little Hellfire? So That's whose, what they tell whose me. baby is this Aqua baby? Is this Aquaman's Aqua baby? Yes, Aquaman and Mira. Aqua yeah. Baby? Yeah, oh, exactly. So- and it's funny because they actually gave him a daughter, so I feel like they're actually going that whole um, Justice League uh, Unlimited route. Oh. Remember when he goes into the future and he yeah. see Aqua Girl too? Yeah. Okay. I was like, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> little redheaded, so little cool. redheaded baby. Little redheaded baby. You know. Well, he's a blonde, and his and mirrors are redheads, mirrors so are that redhead. makes sense. Um, Nightwing seventy was really good too. Yes, it's getting um, better. He man in the yeah, yeah. I was shocked that I actually liked it. No offense, Andrew. <laughs> I have not been a fan. <laughs> well, now that he's like, he actually has like two sets of memories. I mean, they're kind of getting back. You know, I, I told you by 75, I think he's going to be fully back. This is 70. So, but what's up with yeah. that transition costume? He looks like Captain America almost or something. He's got that red, white, and blue. <laughs> Jokes were made. That's, <laughs> that's were placed. That's, that's, that's Bloodhaven's ass. <laughs> Basically. And of course, it's a prelude to a uh, Joker War. Mm. Yeah. Joker. I'm not excited about it necessarily. I'm very apprehensive about it. I'm, but... bur- I'm burnt out on big events, you know. Exactly. It's going to take something really good to get, you know. Right now, I'm just like collecting the books. I'm like, yeah, I can skip, you know. Like Empire Charlie, I'm just like, I don't know if I want to get that. I'm just like. I mean, you know, I'm already going get, go, going to be getting into the Outlaws storyline. Yeah, so, yeah. and then you've also got the summer annuals uh, thing yes. coming up. You know, um, which I like. You know, yes, I like. I mean, Empire. I kind of feel like I should read it. Uh, it's going to be Fantastic Four centric. You yeah. know, so that's that's a selling point to it. But I mean, I you bring up a good point. Maybe they should get back to basics instead of focusing on big events. Do one a year and maybe like make it like you know that like we did back in the day. Have like the annuals be the big event. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean that would be the smart thing to do. But um, and you can put out you can put out thicker books that cost you know a buck or two. Yeah, more. but you know, to, and to be fair, I actually get some new thing. I mean, you know, really, I stand by it though that Robin 
80 year special is worth every penny. I'm surprised they didn't go a little bit more, to be honest. I, I appreciate their wish. Yeah, but I wonder if it's because in April, the Catwoman and Joker ones are also coming out, too. Probably. 80 is, a, is yeah, this year's a, a lot of. Oh, yeah, yeah, big. yeah. Jay Garrick Flash, Justice Society, yeah, all these bad characters, yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah, if you're not Batman or Superman and you're like a Golden Age hero, yeah, this is like your anniversary. <laughs> Basically, I do want to. I do want to issue kind of a do not buy unless you absolutely have to complete the the arc. Though so, uh, He Man and the Masters of the Multiverse number five has taken the terrible dive. I don't know that it can recover. Ooh, so ooh, just wow. warning. <laughs> what? What? You, or is it the writing or something that's gone downhill? Or yeah, the story has lost the thread, and it is all over the place, Ooh. and characterization was bad, and <sighs> I don't know. Hmm. They're just losing the point of what they set out to do, it feels like. Oh, yeah. And hey. also, it was like, a, I felt like I missed an issue, because it's like they're talking about stuff, and it's not foreshadowing, and it's not callbacks, and I'm just like, did I, I don't, I didn't miss an issue, so it's just like, it feels weird. Hmm. Just, uh, yeah, it's just one of those weird issues where you're just like, what the heck is going on? I want to give a big shout out to uh, Bitter Reaper. I'll, I'll report Seven. back next month, but yeah, this this issue you could probably skip. It's fine. Bitter Root, okay. Charlie. Bitter Root oh, number yeah. seven. Uh, always, always good. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting because we are getting a little more. This kind of starts off with a sort of view of uh, Doctor Sylvester who is kind of the uh, villain of the piece that we've seen later. We sort of get his backstory in this. And, you know, it's kind of neat. We, we're we getting this idea of, you know, finding the, uh, the, the, the beings that are not, uh, they are not humans possessed by, by, uh, by the, the spirits. It's, it's other things. And it's, it's really interesting. We're getting a lot more mythology. It's a little, a little hard to follow because they are cutting between all the different stories. You know, uh, poor Berg still needs to is his demon gut came back, so that's a big that's a big issue for that. And yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of parallel stories going on, but I'm really enjoying Bitterroot as always. Uh, come on, Legendary Pictures, we're waiting for this. Oh, do we lose? Oh wait, Lol popping back in. <laughs> No. Um, Her spot's still there. Yeah, I know. I don't know. If you, yeah, you... I did get my, my, my alternate comics books, but I did not get the chance to read them yet. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, that's it. It came out on Wednesday, and... Oh, no, that's not the other one. And Gods and Gears. Okay, so half my books are missing here. Uh, Gods and Gears. <laughs> uh, I haven't read that yet, either. Um, I will do that later. I'll probably talk about them next week. Okay. Oh, hey, hey Lilith, did you read Batman 91? I actually did out of morbid curiosity, and um, oh, I thought you said you were reading. Yeah. I thought you were reading this arc. I am, but like I thought I was gonna want to skip this one because a lot of the people on Twitter were not liking it, but I ended up liking it. So. I liked, I liked it. I liked the story, but once again, does it seem like we're like pushing Harley Quinn as like a bit, you know, more hero than villain again? Yeah, and I'm not here for that. Yeah. Yeah, anti yeah. hero is fine, but Catwoman's better in that respect, and so yes. it, she really doesn't. It doesn't make sense for her to try to be a hero, like to me personally. You know, if she'd I be a hero, of, she got her life together. That that would make her a hero for me. If she got her life together, and I never saw her again, I think <laughs> that I think, would be great. I think they want her separate from the Joker, and without that, they're like, oh, well, they want her to be more like a hero, you know. Well, give her the life she deserves with Poison Ivy for the last damn time. Exactly. Exactly. Again, well, but you know. But then, then you have your whole Batman, Catwoman dynamic. Is oh, if she gives up her life of crime, how is she going to justify that with Poison Ivy's life of crime? Especially since you know Poison Ivy, at least sometimes wants to kill all humans. And yep, and Harley's I agree with now. that stance. But it's fine. I know, I know that. But you know, Poor even thing. though Bender says, but underneath his voice, except for Fry, every time he says it. It's still not necessarily the best thing to 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 do, and so Hearing it can put a strain on the relationship. Myself. That's all I'm saying. When you're dating a human and you want to kill all humans, but again, I think the I think the Harley Quinn animated proves that like you can have like a Harley and Ivy who are like 
are in a life of crime, but you but you don't have to be a murder psychopath like the Joker. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. honestly, a good crime book. I mean anyone who's reading Black Cat will tell you a good crime book is a good book. You know, you I've, can have the character be a criminal and just have the heck Conan the Barbarian is absolutely a criminal. He murders lots of people all I, the time. I mean, since Catwoman's pretty much reformed now, make do a Harley and Ivy book, have them be a couple, and have them be like the queens of Gotham crime. Uh, you know, don't don't always judge Harley by who she's in a relationship with. Let Harley just do Harley. Okay, well, th- okay. You can't let Harley just do Harley because you get beaver jokes. Or that movie. Stop or, beaver jokes. Or that movie. Yeah, well, no. That's, uh, uh, fair enough. Fair well, enough. I'm just saying. chemicals where all the hardworking people are just trying to make some damn money. Uh. I think Lilith had had the right idea. They should make her the Doc Sampson of the uh, DC universe. Oh. Just have her get her brains together and then just start psychoanalyzing everyone. Write a bunch of books explaining all of the complex neuroses of, of your favorite superheroes. Oh, that's your book. Hey, Harley just like for instance, show Travis Langley. <laughs> Oh, that's Har- it? Harley Quinn writes the book, it's, uh, the other side, the other side of the straight jacket, and goes on all the talk shows, which is just explaining all of the neuroses of every person in all of Gotham's underworld. And then Joker and everyone's trying to kill her. What? Who is she? Amazing Mary Jane? <laughs> exactly, think- exactly. That'd be a great note to take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just saying. I think that would make a great story and arc and a great oh. re she even has her own podcast oh yes. Yes. there we go you steal everything from marvel out. you're welcome you steal everything from spider-man that's right <laughs> give her her own podcast her own book yeah actually you know what would be a really good role for harley hmm okay Sort of the sort of a night nurse kind of concept, you know. But instead of like sewing up, you know, beat up villains and and heroes after hours, she does the psychoanalysis and the PTSD for uh, treatments for heroes and villains. Now, Off the books, ooh. Underworld of Gotham. Come here, talk to her. Doc, they, talk to Doctor Quinn. They, I mean, they kind of seem like they they want to do this. So how about I mean, again, throw in the podcast and the book and like we were all saying, but like make Harley like they want her to be kind of like the Deadpool, make her like a Deadpool slash like Instagram celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. DC shouldn't just chase Marvel though. That's the thing. They should. Well, be you tell bold. that to everybody in the in the corporate offices. I was gonna. I doing. was gonna say, why would you chase after someone making all the money? Hmm. Because they already made that money. Go chase after different money. Look for the money they're not making, and then get that money before they get there. Money, That's money, how you money. make money. Like they used money. to. Like they used Ooh. to do. Ooh. I mean, arguably, yeah. Ooh. I mean, it's, I don't know what they used to do. Ooh. I don't know, you know, but I'm well, saying. Well, let's be honest. Marvel has stolen a lot of things from DC and vice versa. I'm not going to get into that oh, argument well, because yeah. it is 907 at night and I'm a little drunk. Ooh, <laughs> lucky you. You're a little drunk like the world is a little infected by coronavirus. No, I've only had three green apple Smirnoffs. What do you mean? No, Smirnoff. That's yeah. not even alcohol. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's a beer. Oh, that, that's like. The, are you drinking like the 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 the, the, the rebranded uh, Zimas? Mike's hard lemonade. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. If only Zima okay. would come back to me. Uh, I didn't know what I had when I was in I middle school. You. Whoops. <laughs> the thing about you know they were just so far ahead of their time, you know. And then the every, futuristic beverage. I agree. I agree with that theory one hundred percent. It was like the dipping dots of alcohol. That was that was the problem. It was too far ahead of its time. But you know, yeah, DC should do whatever it is DC does, and not just try to be what do they do? Marvel. But you they're know, villains. <laughs> We're the well, bad guys. Superman but- really can be. A villain, if you think about it hard enough, we're the just bad saying. guys. Well, you know, or just you know, focus on Luthor. Or focus on uh, not. Don't focus on Joker. You've done Joker to death. Just you've beaten. But wait, there's more. 
<laughs> With our three jokers coming up shortly. <laughs> yeah, they've only teased up three jokers for, what, four years now? I mean, come on. Oh, I know. Hey, hey. And, and you just know it's not as good as the hype. Hey, that's the, I only, don't care. that's the only way. <laughs> that's, the only way. Good. that's the only way. That's the only way. about the three jokers. There is literally nothing that will be... Then again, because it went on too long, it's like if they had done three jokers and they said no, he's got you know, or they like even that. Oh, there actually are three different people who are actually the Joker, or he actually child. physically transforms when he changes into who he's going to be, and that's why he he actually does have superpowers, contrary to what we've thought. Doctor Jekyll, and he's Mr. actually Flappy? he's actually been the elongated man the whole time. Uh, <laughs> Just I one love more it. I love the it. The elongated man was the Joker. Um, I think you just ruined the spoiler. I think you just ruined. It. I remember when elongated man like turned into a big, tough muscle guy for a while in the Secret Six or the <laughs> Suicide Squad. One of those two books. What fan fiction have you been reading, Charles? <laughs> no, you don't remember guy. that. Um. They brought back Sue Dibney. I think. I think it was no, probably some new. I, I want to say it was Secret Six. It was like the last run. Of, the last run of Secret Six I read, and there was this guy. Who, he like talked like you know a big bruiser guy, and he was all he was all muscly. And then in the end, you realize that actually that was elongated man. He just restructured his body the whole time. Not quite soft and not quite hard. Yeah, something like that. So you know. You can do a lot with Elongated Man, and the idea that the Joker is actually just a mentally ill Elongated Man, because he actually has a lot of mental illness issues that we haven't really diagnosed up until now. Or Plastic plastic Man, I can see that. Oh, you can definitely see that with Plastic Man. And Plastic Man, you know, he, he is truly plastic. He can actually, that's what's cool about him, he can actually create gears and motors. Yeah, he can himself. take more shapes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's not he doesn't have to be contiguous like a lot of shapeshifters. And he was already a criminal before he got his powers too, so. Mhm. Exactly. Exactly. I think that is where you get. Oh, oh there there you go. A long-headed man, <laughs> plastic man, and who's the third uh, stretchy guy in DC? Yeah, yeah. I think it's the third one, isn't there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I was going to say no. I and then say, actual Joker, and they're all actually the three Jokers. I mean, look at look at Killing Joke. I could see Eel O'Brien being the guy, the stand-up comedian who's the Red Hood who goes into the chemicals. Yeah, that's we're funny. writing a better story for them. Let's stop oh, that. Or yeah, then he gets the elongated man powers, but he never uses them because it freaks him out. But he does change himself every t- every so often because sometimes he gets a little out- outside of his head. Email, email me, Jeff Johns. I'll send you everyone's address. You can send us checks. Yeah, we've got better ideas. Give us you our know. shekels. Because they're uh-huh. still trying. You know, and, 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 and not so long because they just they never they they said it and. It was like, wait, did we want to say three jokers? Why did we say that? What, what was our plan going to be? And I was like, uh, just just vamp, just vamp for four we years. We just picked we'll, a random we'll number. It just the, the die the die just came up three. That's all. <laughs> there are actually three jokers. There could have been six, but we rolled a three. Yes. All right, before we get out of here, Derek. um, I do I do want to shout out one little indie comic company. If you guys don't mind, okay. I read sure. this week. Um, it's. It's Impact, uh, what is it, Impact Theory. They did a book called Hexagon Number One. And if you liked, um, if you like, like, um, stuff like with video games, it's got a very, it's a very 80s book. It's like, set in the 80s. There's like a local arcade. The kid, um, you know, sneaks into like an all night midnight event and, you know, uses his first quarter and beats like the game that can't be beat, but it triggers like an alien invasion. And it's just craziness that in- the artwork super cute. Um, Wait, what's I don't know. I like it. <laughs> I think it might have been. <laughs> it, it feels very familiar, but in a very playful but refreshed way. So, um, it was written by Michael Morecci, and the art is by Jeremy Raypack. So, yeah, I thought I'd just shout him out. I read it. I thought it was cute. Thought I might mention it because we love indie comic books here on Cape and Lunatics. So. Oh, hey. Did- Hey, oh, hey, did anyone read Amazing Mary Jane number six? No, of I didn't course. Get the, yet. The, start, <gasps> the start of the second one. Charles! <laughs> I didn't get the chance to yet. Yeah. I had a lot of books to read, and I didn't even finish all my books. So, Lilith, what did you think? Um, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> like, not in a bad way, but I just, I, I wanted her to not 
come back so soon, I guess. Well, she kind of, she was back and now she's gone again. What is it, like witness protection or something? What is it? She's yeah. back in New York or... Well, she was back on a talk show to talk about the movie and stuff, and then some weird stuff goes down in the uh, studio with some weird mask guy, and so, she's like, instead of running the peach, she runs the cops, and they immediately put her, like, in witness protection and drop her in the middle of Montana. Anaconda, okay. Montana. Yeah. Sure, why not? I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm willing to get, I mean, it's the same, you know, it's the same writer and everything, I'm willing to give it a shot, but it's just, like, it almost seems like... You're trying to force another wacky adventure, you know? Oh, I wonder if she's going to meet... Exactly! Uh, he's got he's got a uh, farm out in Montana, I think, so... I mean, I wonder if, like, they weren't... No, they, she's going to be moisture farming, it's fine. I wonder if this was, there like, a go. thing where they're, like, they weren't they weren't sure if they were going to get past five, and then when they greenlit it for, you know, past five, they were like, oh, okay, it's come up Exactly! Because I was like, I could I I would have been fine with her, you know, she should have been on, like, a media... They should have had her go on the media tour for, like, the movie or something. Well, here's the thing that I feel like the interviews, what they did, they wanted to do that callback to when the Avengers, what was that, two like 239 or something like that? Oh, uh, when they did went to Letterman? Like, um, the day that Letterman yeah. show or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's what they were kind of like, hey, we're cool, we're fun, we're old enough to remember that, get well, it? Well, yeah, the talk show was weird. It was a female host, but it was almost like the Jimmy Fallon, you know, Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show. Yeah. They are like, oh, let's play a game, you know. Yeah. So, so that was their that was their mulligan. You get one yeah. with me. I mean, nowadays, like, like I said, for the most part, it was good. But I just don't get why she went to the cops instead of Peter. Especially, you know, it's like a masked villain who is. Are you familiar? Come with on, this? Let, let's be honest though. Pete lately, kind of an idiot. Oh, yeah, they they. Oh, they you know, and maybe she's trying to. You he, know, he's got his own podcast and stuff to worry about. You know, it is what it is. You know, maybe she just felt. She's been going to him too much, and she wants to solve her own problems. Well, if she tried to solve it on her own, that's fine, but she goes to the cops, and I was... <laughs> hey, this is going to be the return of Captain DeWitt. Shut up. <laughs> Although, you know what? Maybe that's what people should do more often. Go to the cops. Because that is what you should actually do. Go to the cops. You can arrest people. Instead of, I'll web them up, and then, you know, the cops will pick them up, but, you know... Got nothing to charge him on. They were just wrapped up in webbing. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> you know? I'm here for so, you. Here's your boomerangs back, Mr. Captain Boomerang. Go. Go. Go boomerang. Go boomerang. And I don't know why you're gonna, what you're going to do with all those boomerangs, but, you know. Is that a rap song? What you going to do with all those boomerangs? <laughs> yes. All right. Anything Oh, else? we are so 2000 and late. Yes, we are. <laughs> Not 2000. Oh, God. Don't sue me while I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you want to tell me, Tristan? They should make the beef with salsa and cheese at Taco Bell. Yeah, they should have a special menu. A special menu. Oh, but I think I know why they did um, Amazing Mary Jane number six. It's this way, I think it, arc, you don't, it makes you feel like you don't really have to know what happened that last arc, maybe. So, if, you know, new people just want to jump in. True. Well, there you go. It's a new arc. We're in Montana now. Go. <laughs> Basically, that's all you need to know for this. An occupation. Exactly. <laughs> Montana. Go. Like I. Yes, said. and. <laughs> like I said. Yes, and. Like I exactly. said. Exactly. Like I said, I'm here for it. So. Okay. I guarantee you, she meets Modoc. In Montana. I, I heard Captain America number yeah. twenty was good, but I can't wait till to listen on Super Connectivity. It was okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, I, was, I figure we'll talk, what, Captain America, Fantastic Four on Super Connectivity? Yeah, we got a couple things to talk. Yes. All right, so should we get out of here? Oh, don't, don't forget Ghost Spider number eight came out. I have yes. not oh, read it yet. Oh, we're talking about so that. That's our, big, that's our big... Oh, yeah, he wants to talk about that because the outlawed connection, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's okay. coming. It's coming. I gave you a chance to talk about it on Spidercast last night, and you f- turned your nose up to me. And like I that. hadn't read it yet. What do you want from me? So we will talk. That it, yes. Super late. That's actually what I read instead of uh, Amazing Mary Jane because I had downloaded Amazing oh. Mary Jane and then Phil said, "Oh, you should read Ghost Spider," um, and I said, "Okay, well, I'll read that." And then I didn't get back to the Amazing Mary Jane, which is also mm-hmm. downloaded on my mm-hmm. on my phone. So, yep. Okay. Anyway, don't forget, Spider Woman number one came out. 
Oh, did you yeah, read I'm it? Yeah, we'll talk on the Ultimate Spider Cast sometime. Okay, did you read it? Yeah. Okay. But we can talk that Ultimate Spider Cast. All right, that'll give me a chance to read it because I didn't, I didn't get it. So. Okay. Very good. Very All right. good. All okay. right. All right. So, yes. Join Let's us. get out of here. Join us next time. Uh, episode 150, Master Doom. What's going to happen? I don't even know half of what's going to happen. He has, he has, supposedly he has some, I, part of this we might have to do on Skype because he said something about a mystery guest who he said Charlie Esser is going to like. Okay. I was like thinking, Shooter? <laughs> But I don't know. It's lots of people. Well, I, there's one person I know he knows that he knows I like. He, so. know, he knows things. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think he's. Yeah. There's one guy. I, I It could be that person. It could be somebody else. And then we'll I, see. And then I know him and I were talking trivia. So he said he's putting something together. Again, I don't, I don't know anything. So, yes, Doom comes next week. Yes. So email Doom us. Comes. You still send us your thoughts on your favorite comic books, TV, movies. Whatever, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember to follow us on social media. You can find it all in one convenient place. That's linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash capesandlunatics. And remember to support our sponsors, Tweaked Audio, Hunt a Killer, Pod Life the Book, now in digital and paperback. And remember, go buy that. Go buy all of your toilet paper and your paper plates and all your survival supplies on Amazon. Spoilers, and- they're out of stock. <laughs> One day when uh, Amazon gets resupplied, uh, use the link right down there in the show notes for uh, Southgate Media Group and help us help us support Mr. Uh, Rob Southgate. He's going to give you so much entertainment next week. Uh, so, yes, use the link for Southgate Media Group to help bring you these fine products. All right, little hellfire. Um, if you nerds want to fight me on the internet, you can find me on Twitter at little hellfire or on Instagram at little hellfire sixty nine. Hello, Duh. Duh. don't your jobs, Charlie yes, sir. And of course, you can always write to me in old fashioned email way. We are Mars and Paws once did at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet things someday, one time. Maybe I will. So I don't know. At Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. And pause. <laughs> Got it, dude. You're gonna give Tristan his damn shackle so he can get another Vader mask. Hello. Oh, please. Tristan's too hip for that joke anymore. That's a dad joke. This joke, man. I know. He's, he's, a, he's our joke writer. <laughs> he's a writer for our show. Hey, man. He's an intern. We ain't paying hey, nobody. Put us on TV or satellite <laughs> radio something, man. I'll have Tristan Messer as a writer. I don't care. Anyway, for another week, we have been your capes. Episode. Lunatics. Okay. So, yes, join us back here in one week. Master Doom. You've heard his name spoken in fear and in hushed tones. If you don't know the man, meet him next week, right here. Molly will let him out the play. Good night.